Some video games embrace and show off realism in some pretty interesting and fun ways. Here are 10 realistic game mechanics we think every game, or maybe almost every game, could use. Starting off at number 10, this is an incredibly small thing, but you almost never see it in games. You know what usually happens when you go up to talk to something, like you either magically teleport to the correct spot the game wants you to stand in, or the NPC robotically rotates in place to face your direction. Neither of those options are particularly immersive or realistic, but this is how most video games really work. At the end of the day, it seems like it's a lot of extra work to make somebody turn to face you realistically when most of the time players probably won't really care or notice anyway. Well, we noticed, and there are shockingly few games that actually do it like this, so when you start up a conversation, the NPC actually turns to face you in a way that looks natural. One of the few that actually does it pretty well comes from an unusual source, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Now, between main missions, you return to like this safe house and you could talk to your spy allies, including Helen Park, who's sitting in a desk chair. Now, if you approach her from the front, she talks to you like normal, but if you approach her from behind, then she actually has a unique animation where she turns to face you. And it actually looks pretty cool and realistic. Yes? It's an incredibly small detail, but it's stuff like this that makes dialogue scenes feel so much more natural. Next over at number nine, even the most visually realistic and immersive games have NPCs that are just there to serve their specific purpose and nothing more. When you use them, you don't expect anything other than their canned animations. They're there to buy stuff from you or act as fast travel. They never really feel like actual people, they're just a gameplay function. Games should be consistent about stuff like this, otherwise it would make dealing with NPCs incredibly annoying. But it is fun when games do things to surprise you or catch you off guard. And one way games can do that is have NPCs get mad at you. Usually this sort of thing happens if you do the same thing over and over again. You know, click on a unit in a Warcraft game and they yell at you, for example. If you want something with a little more fidelity than that, then look at Death Stranding. Now, Fragile is a major character in the story, but her gameplay function is to serve as fast travel. If you go back and forth, just fast traveling around over and over for no reason, then eventually she'll snap at you. You really need to jump this much? Well, anyway, you know what to do. Uh, it's unlikely that you'll ever see this through normal gameplay, but as a little Easter egg reaction, it's an amusing surprise. It's another extremely small little thing that we'd like to see more games do. It just makes games feel more reactive and, you know, alive with little moments like these. Because in real life, if you kept walking up to the same person over and over again and then just kind of taking advantage of it, I think they would snap at you. Over at number eight, uh, most of the time in RPGs, when you're in dialogue, you can do things like persuasion or intimidation, which can unlock new options or even avoid combat entirely if you're slick. You know, you like to see it, but it doesn't often feel very immersive. It's all just like a gameplay function. You put points in a skill tree and your conversation powers get better, right? So credit where credit is due, it is fun to see a game like Starfield give you some other dialogue options depending on your character's backstory and perks. Of course, Starfield is hardly the only game to do something like this. We've seen it a lot, but it does have one of the goofiest conversation checks that we've ever seen. Now, in the mission where you're infiltrating the UC Navy base as part of the pirate faction, you're eventually stopped by a test pilot who thinks that you match the description of the suspicious person. This only happens if you've managed to talk your way to this point in the mission. And the normal options for how to deal with it are your standard boilerplate persuade or just attack. Now, if you've got the extrovert perk, uh, then things can get pretty goofy. You can actually claim that like, no, you match the description and it turns into a whole like duck season rabbit season routine until the guy eventually gives up it's silly but honestly it's a hell of a lot more realistic than what normally passes for persuasion in these games no you match the description we look nothing alike i'm beginning to think you're the intruder this guy takes a lot more convincing this way than your standard persuasion check where it boils down to, I think you're suspicious. Uh, no. Uh, okay, move along. 
<laughs> this mechanic we really like here is, is that your perks actually affect your character. Being an extrovert isn't just some stat change. It actually gives you some new options in dialogue. And that's the sort of things we like to see. What? That doesn't even make sense. Ugh, you got me so confused. I don't even remember what we were talking about. Now down at number seven, uh, there are plenty of games that luxuriate in showing you the most meticulously detailed food, you know, like a Monster Hunter or a Yakuza, but when someone actually eats it, they're basically just shoveling food sludge into their mouths. That's if the eating part is even shown at all. It's just rarely anything that we'd call realistic. Now, what chance do games have showing people eating actual food like actual human beings when a ton of movies and TV shows can't even accomplish it? Uh, the only ones who even bothered are the crazy people at Rockstar. At this point, all we can do is be in awe of how absurdly ambitious Red Dead Redemption 2 was and is. There's just nothing else like it, even now. The amount of detail they put into everything is so far beyond what most games will, will ever manage and really what some players even ask for. And that includes something as seemingly unnecessary as NPCs just eating. In Red Dead 2, uh, when you enter certain fancier establishments, you might see someone eating a meal. Most players don't actually stop and look because they're probably just gonna assume it looks like any other game where the NPC is just sitting around there miming the actions of eating. But if you do watch for a while, then the NPC actually cuts their food eats it, and eventually clears their plate. You may have seen this moment go viral before where people zoom into it with like a binocular or sniper scope. Now, this is like the kind of details we love to see in games and we want to see it in more, but it is so much work that we at least understand why most developers wouldn't even bother because most people just don't even realize. Next over at number six, uh, the quality and realism of climbing in an Assassin's Creed game can change pretty wildly between entries. Sometimes it can look great and appear very human. Other times it can look stiff and awkward or too fast. The recent RPG trilogy has mostly automated climbing so that it's extremely easy and fast, but not particularly real feeling. So that's what makes the newest entry in the franchise such a breath of fresh air. We're finally back to something a little closer to the climbing mechanics of the original games with Assassin's Creed Mirage, and it can make for some pretty immersive moments. Love it or hate it, you know, like things in this game with the climbing are pretty cool. The thing that stands out to us is the wall ejecting in this game, which can be seamlessly integrated into movement to climb up walls pretty quickly while looking surprisingly realistic, at least as far as like ancient person parkour goes. Now over at number five, uh, don't you hate it in games where you get to a door that needs a key that in real life, you could probably just break down or a wall that needs to be blown up, but no, your grenades won't do. You need this like special item or special explosive that'll blow through this particular wall. Uh, now, most of the time, anything that requires a key item in a game is just completely indestructible full stop. Like even in a sensible world, the main character would just go through a window or kick in a door or climb over that something, you know? So when a game actually lets you bypass large portions of the game by doing something actually realistic, it's shocking. One of our favorite examples is uh, the, the Resident Evil 4 remake and how it lets you just blast through obstructions like this collapsed mine tunnel. Normally you're supposed to get some explosives by exploring the mine area, but if you're feeling impatient, then you can just grab an RPG and shoot the wall out that way instead. It's not just a faster solution, it's an easy one. It's just that most players wouldn't even bother because they assume this game, like so many others, would make it so nothing happens and that you have to follow the rules. But nope, just grab an RPG and blow up your obstruction. We love to see it. Next up at number four, uh, if there's one simple mechanic nearly every game should have, it's the ability to just up and walk away. So many games give you almost no reason why your main character would actually go into the haunted house or run face first into danger. I don't know about you, but if someone gave me a gun and told me to clear out an entire enemy base single-handedly, I'd probably just like get on a boat and go anywhere, so. Yeah, but Far Cry games are most famous for this, but there are a few other games that let you just get up and leave too. Like, did you know that uh, the Phantom Liberty expansion in Cyberpunk can be ended early if you just walk away from the mission after hearing about it? Johnny will even congratulate you for it if you do. Still with us? What the? What happened? Your presidential rescue op. Miserable failure.
Even indie games are in on it, like uh, Astalon, Tears of the Earth. At the start of the game, you're free to just leave the Cursed Tower and leave your friends to die, and you get a whole little cutscene too. Of course, this sort of thing should be intentionally unsatisfying, but I just like it when a game gives me the option because it is really the most realistic mechanic of them all. You ever been in a situation you don't like and then you just leave? Yeah, it, it works. Now over at number three, there are puzzle rooms where you have to use some kind of special contraption with the Ultra Hand to launch something into a big target, or you can just use a bomb arrow. Now, yeah, Tears of the Kingdom is a game that gives players a lot of options for how to complete its many challenges, but rarely are those options all that realistic. You can do some crazy stuff, but the game still forces you to hit that target with these big balls anyway, right? Actually, no, you, you don't. Instead of wasting your time trying to perfectly time it so you hit a big ball and it hits a target, why not just take the easy route? Which is so much more realistic because seriously, like who would bother with all these contraptions if they could just solve them the easy way? In this game's case, the easy way equals an arrow attached to a bomb. It's way easier to aim and it's got a significant enough force to knock back the target at the end of the challenge instantly. No physics puzzle to require, no brain power needed. A target is a target, right? Anything you hit with it should be enough to count, but in most games, it just doesn't. They want you to play the game the intended way, but it's so much more fun when a game lets you do something realistic and you're actually rewarded for it. Basically, more games need to embrace the concept that anything will do the job sometimes. Next at number two, uh, your eyes adjusting to the darkness. Let's talk about this. Wouldn't this be a great mechanic in pretty much every horror game ever? You spend so much time in the dark in video games, but there's rarely an option to do the thing that we all do when you're in the dark long enough. Eventually, your eyes begin to adjust and you can see a lot better than before. Very few games actually let you do this. In fact, the only one that we can really think of is Metal Gear Solid 3, where uh, you fall into a cave after the boss fight with Ocelot. In most games, if you don't have some kind of light source, then you're screwed. But if there's one thing Hideo Kojima and company likes, it's little details. So this game actually makes it so your vision gets better after spending a minute or two in the darkness. It's, it's not like super bright by any stretch, but it's actually possible to navigate. Some games give you an automatic night vision effect when you're in dark places, but they very rarely actually have the darkness slowly appear less dark the more time you spend in it. It's hardly the smallest or even the coolest little detail in Metal Gear Solid 3, but it is one that we'd like to see in more games, especially ones that force you to spend a lot of time wandering around in the dark. Now finally, down at number one, we're talking about the pacifist option. And we're not talking about games where you can play through them without killing people, which is impressive, but not exactly realistic. I mean, if I was sneaking through a heavily armed base, you'd better believe I'd be stabbing dudes rather than choking them out. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what I would actually do, but hey, real life isn't like video games and it would take forever and be noisy as hell every time you tried to choke someone out and they'd still wake up after a little bit. No, we're talking about something like the forest games where it's actually possible to coexist with the violent natives of the island that you're stranded on. In most games, violence is the only option, which makes for a fun experience, but let's be real here. Nobody is fighting off like a dozen crazed cannibals every night. Uh, you'd be dead for sure. <laughs> The most realistic option is to just keep your head down and avoid conflict, and depending on your difficulty and where you've built your base, that can actually work. Even when the natives start getting bold enough to attack you, if you just block and run away, they'll eventually give up and leave you alone. If you prove that you're harmless to them, then they won't attack you. Most people would rather avoid conflict. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't wanna die. So to us, uh, the pacifist option is just way more realistic. It's rare that games even put you in the position where an option like this would even make sense. But for games where it does, this is a mechanic that we'd like to see used more often and in more interesting ways. Violence isn't always the option, and maybe in more video games it should do that too. And not just in the RPG way, but more like something clever like this. 
Anyway, those are 10 cool, realistic game mechanics and features in games that we'd like to see more often. There are definitely more examples out there. We've talked about some in the past, but if you got any specifics, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear them. We'd love to talk more about this stuff. Now, if you do like this video and you like just talking games with us every day casually, clicking the like button does help us out. Thank you. And if you're new, consider subscribing because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.